was no repeat of the 1992 fluke for Pakistan as England lifted the T20 World Cup yesterday. England, who are also the world champions of 50 over format, proved their class as they crushed both India and Pakistan in the crunch games. Even as the T20 World Cup has concluded, the cricket fervour will still be on back home as the Pal play a three-match one-day series against UAE beginning today. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. Candidates and leaders distributing tall assurances of development and prosperity in Poitari. Leaders trying to woo voters with the agenda of bridge over Chulakhat. A host of top brass leaders won't be able to vote for themselves due to election-related law. Leaders include K.P. Sharma Oli, Pushpa Kamal Dahal, Ansari Gharti, among others. At least six people killed and 81 others wounded in an explosion in central Istanbul, Turkey. The blast reported to be carried out by a female suicide bomber. And a Nepal kick-off three-match one-day series against UAE at TU Cricket Ground. Nepal win toss and elect to field first. Candidates and leaders have provided tall assurances of development and prosperity in Boitari, which has only one electorate constituency for the upcoming parliamentary elections. There are altogether 11 contestants up in fray in Baitari, including Narendra Bahadur Kumar of CPN Mao Center representing the ruling alliance and CPN UML's Damodar Bhandari. Former minister and Nepali Congress leader Keshav Bahadur Chand and some other independent candidates are likely to make the contest quite intriguing in the only constituency in Baitari. Former Prime Minister and Mao Center Chairperson, who reached Baitari to persuade the voters in favor of the ruling alliance candidate, expressed commitment to construct a motorable bridge in Baitari's Chulaghat on Nepal-India border. It may be recalled that CPN UML Chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli, who had reached Baitari a few days ago in course of election campaigning, had also committed off-bridge at Chulaghat. It was during former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's tenure that the local residents in Boitari had launched a two-month relay hunger strike, demanding the construction of a bridge at Chulakhat. Leaders and candidates every election used to sell the dream of a West Sethi project, Poncheshwar a multi-purpose project, Mahakali Corridor, while this time they have found a new agenda in the form of a, the bridge over Chulakhat. Baitari has a total of just over 140,000 voters, while the local election here was won by the alliance candidate with CPN UML coming in the second place. The election fever in the plains and hilly regions of Chitwan are far from different. Even as the plains see election campaigns on a daily basis, the hilly areas have remained unlisted. The accessible plains in Chitwan is gearing up for the upcoming 20th November elections with the candidates getting busy in door-to-door -door campaigns. However, the election buzz in hilly region has remained lackluster. The locals here have simple demands as they want better roads and proper electricity management. The candidates say that it is difficult to reach the hilly regions, but they have continued their campaigns and claim that they are working on getting the votes from the hills. Ichya Kamana Rural Development Committee of Chitwan is a complete hilly region, whereas three electorates from Rapti, two from Kalika and one from Bharatpur municipalities fall in hilly region. With the candidates only focused on accessible areas, the issues of the residents of remote hilly regions have largely remained ignored. The election law states that voters can cast their vote only where their names are in the voter list. Following the law, some candidates will be barred from casting vote for themselves. Some of the candidates have changed their electoral constituencies in the upcoming elections due to their own preference and also because of the issue of ticket distribution. Some candidates are running in constituencies where their name is not in the voter list. Following the election law, CPN UML chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli, who is a candidate from Chapa 5, will not be able to vote for himself as his name is in the voter list in Balkot, Bhaktapur 2. 
Likewise, CPN Mao Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal, who is a candidate in Gurkha 2, will not be able to cast his vote for himself as his name is in the voter list in Chitwan 3. Other Mao Center candidates who will be denied voting opportunity for themselves are Onsari Kharti Mogar, Jhakku Subedi, Devendra Paudel, and Kalpana Thamala. Likewise, Nepali Congress leaders Mohan Bahadur Basnet, Pradeep Paudel, Mahalakshmi Upadhyay, Bir Bahadur Balayar, CPN UMLs Agni Prasad Kharel, Sarvendra Khanal, CPN Unified Socialists, Birod Khatiwara, and Loktantrik Samajwadi Party's Lakshman Lal Karna also fall under the category of contestants who won't be able to vote for themselves. The scenario is identical for some candidates of the province assembly. In the local level election, candidates have to file their candidacy where they have their name in the voter list. However, in case of parliamentary and provincial elections, candidates have the freedom of filing candidacy from any constituency. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces what difference have they seen in the election campaigns this time compared to the past elections. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. पोइला <laughs> Industrial development is considered the backbone of economic prosperity, which is directly related to the country's GDP. But Nepal's industrial growth is shrinking with its contribution to GDP decreasing from 14% to 6%. The country's industrial sector is in a crisis as a result of economic constraints. Development works are set are at snail pace, while a liquidity crisis has created difficulty to construct private houses, which in turn has a mostly affected construction-related industries. Likewise, shoes, garments, biscuits and noodle factories have not been able to operate at 50% capacity. The situation of cement industries is also critical. Although the government is saying that it is making efforts to increase the industrial sector's contribution to the GDP, it has failed to create an investment-friendly environment. At a time when the demand for industrial products is decreasing, the bank interest rates are on the rise, further weakening the financial situation of the industrial sector. The industries have claimed that 30 billion rupees is yet to be collected from the market, while industries have been operating at only 35% capacity. In the given scenario, experts opine that the economy will further weaken. The current electoral manifestos of the political parties have stated that they would work on developing the industrial sector to create employment. The flooding and inundation from Rapti River has been causing massive hardship for the residents living in the close vicinity of the river bank. The election candidates this time have drawn attention of both the governments of Nepal and India to build a 41-kilometer embankment on either sides to safeguard the lives and properties. The Indian Department of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation and the Irrigation Department of Nepal signed an agreement at the end of the previous fiscal year on completing the construction of an embankment on Rapti River within five years. The agreement stated that India will provide approximately 10.5 billion rupees, including technical monitoring, while Nepal will bear 1 billion rupees. 35 kilometers of permanent embankment is said to be constructed on both sides, while the remaining 6 kilometers will be built temporarily. The project commencement has been delayed as the financial final inundation survey has yet to be completed. The deadline to call for tender was until the festival of Tihar. The election candidates, especially from inundation affected areas, have made this issue their primary agenda. Local residents, however, say that ministers and parliamentarians have raised their issues only during election. Earlier, India had conducted a study on inundation caused by 
Kal Kalwa Embankment and Lakshmanpur Barrage. India had built a 13 kilometer long Kal Kalwa Embankment at Holia around 25 years ago, causing the river to change its course, inundating 30,000 hectares of Nepali land. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question, why has the free visa, free ticket scheme for foreign employment not been implemented even after seven years? Your options are A, irresponsible government, B, employment companies' high-handedness, and C, lack of awareness. Voting is on, tap any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good day.